Those who study world culture goes back to the 15th century. You must probably study about the old Nick or Nicole Machiavelli. He wrote a famous, very famous manuscript. It's called The Prince. And he basically said that the way that the governor ruled the government, it's everything justified the means, meaning you can do anything and everything as long as you reach the secure of the state, as long as you reach a point that you feel that your domain and your constituencies are total secure. Um, in that sense, it can turn to a very even evil um, reaction if you read the history of the World War II and Imach Shemo Hitler or Imach Shemo Saddam Hussein and others, they use Machiavelli literature, the prince, as the springboard for their um, mass murdering of people, lying, etc., etc., because all this action justified the means. In Judaism, we hold the opposite. We said that is no such a thing, even uttering a word, not a writing or action, uttering a word, we have to total backup a word. It goes to the extreme, as we explained the past several days, that in Judaism, even yadot nedarim, even kinui nedarim, you're saying something that it's not a full sentence and not total declaration, you already hold up to those statements. Here is a story. Right at the World War I, it was in Russia, um, a city, it's um, the old Russia, now it's a part of Romania, it's called Kishinev. And it was a rabbi by the name of Tsirilson. Uh, Hashem Komdamo, he get killed during World War I. Anyway, the story goes that in his city, he was the rabbi there, uh, it was a shochet, a, a kosher slaughterer, a butcher. And um, the man was a very good, very professional, very um, erudite. The problem is, um, typical called Eastern Europe, he was, he was very much with uh, drinking. And people were talking. And people said, you know, it's wrong to have him being in this type of um, important kashrut job while he have this um, matter of behavior. So the Rosh Kahal, the head of the community, turns to him and said to the butcher, here's the deal. You commit yourself that any time you drink, I'll drink with you. So everything will be in control. But you cannot drink if I'm not drinking with you. Deal or not, if you don't agree, you can no longer be the shochet. They went to the rabbi, the rabbi said, that's a good deal. Everyone's happy, the guy's happy, good. The next thing will happen was the Shabbos, right? And somebody sponsored a big kiddush in honor of the Rosh HaKahal, the president, the head of the community. And sure enough, they have this, uh, whatever it is, the drinking part. The guy drank. The butcher heard from that, and he went back to drinking. So they took him to the rabbi, took him to the court. They said, hey, you're in violation. He says, you're in violation. We agree that we, we are drinking together. And you drank. He says, what are you talking about? They make a kiddush for me. I drank. And the deal is what? That when you have an issue of drinking, so you cannot drink alone, but that's not applied to me, right? The butcher said, what do you mean it's not applied to you? It goes both ways. So here is our discussion of today. When you make this type of agreement, is that applied in both ways, or one-way street is still a good way? Trace the situation, a guy said, you never, have any benefit from me, right? And now you carrying an umbrella, it's raining. And I ran under your umbrella, and I derived benefit from you. 
and you said, wait a second, you said to me last week that I never drive benefit from you. So how come you are under my umbrella? You are driving benefit from me. And I respond and I said, it's none of your business. You, you don't make any difference if I'm under your umbrella when it's rain. You're walking with your umbrella open regardless. You get the point? So our discussion, when we said yesterday, someone said the word, Mudarani alecha, meruchakani mimcha, the Mishnah said. It's like, miktzatner, it's a part of the manner of a vow. So therefore, a person, it's like a nether, he cannot um, derive a sulit on, he cannot derive benefit. So Shmuel said, yesterday we, we elaborate, and we said, Shmuel said, only if a person said lucidly, unambiguously, in a very clear way, that he is not going to eat by you, for example, that's a language of nether. But that wasn't like the language of the brighter we mentioned yesterday. So we said, Shmuel said, <coughs> the same as Rabbi Yossi Bar Hanina, that if a person said, Ani myself and my estate cannot have anything to do with you, it goes both ways. You also prohibited to derive benefit for me. So here, where we are, we are in Tractate Nedarim, page 5, two lines from the top of the page. Tznan, we learn in the Mishnah, page 47b. Hareini alech acherem. It's dedication, like a consecrated item to the temple. You, what is you? You and your estate. So you cannot derive benefit, which means I, my benefit, my joy, um, is prohibited to you the same in comparison to a consecrated item for the temple building maintenance. That's the Ran explains. Aval Madir Lo, which means so far is just one way street. So the Gemara said, is that, th that mean that it's the opposite of what we explained earlier. So they said, You know what is that? When you said, not just you, you, you said, you can express in your own words that is a two way street. Again, let's make sure that we all understand. As long as you don't specify unambiguously, in a very clear way, that it's two way street, it can easily misconstrue or interpret it as one way street. So they said, Atalai Kherem, Hanoder Asu. If someone said, You are like, you are to me like an ad item dedicated to Beit Hamikdash, to the temple. So what does that mean? Something that is dedicated to Beit Hamikdash, to the temple, you cannot derive any benefit, right? Aval Mudar Lo, but the other way not. So again, it's challenge. So it means that the other way around cannot go. So they said, Kigon de Farish lo, the same way. Meaning, according to Rabbi Yossi Bar Hanina, both, both prohibited. So the Gemara asked, Aval Stamamai, if Reuven, for example, said to Shimon, you are like a consecrate to me, and vice versa, and he didn't say it's both ways. Shnehen asurin. So you tell me that it go both ways? We, di we didn't say it. He didn't specify it. Ha miriktane seifa. We learn in the last clause. Harei ni alecha ve'atalai shnehem asurin. If he said it's both ways, then since he specified it's both ways, hadain, that's applies solely that he again clarified, specified that it's both ways. Who the Shne'em Asurim has Tama, if is Isu Yachid is just individual, not. Who Asu Bechadro Mutar. That's the opposite of what Shmuel said. So it means that one, only one prohibited, not both. Now we go to a total different avenue. And this is the Chidush, this is the, the novel, the innovative point. The Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Hanina Mudar Anilecha 
שניהם אסורים, it's all depend, תלוי באיזה לשון, it's all depend upon the language that you use. There is a famous Rashi on the book of Shoftim, book of Judges, chapter 17, um, verse 2. It's a story of the Mica, the famous um, idol sculpture of Mica. Story with his mother. We're not going there, but the idea is the word Lecha, Rashi and one and others said, has double meaning. And it means you and also Mishelcha, from you. So it means you cannot derive benefit from my estate and I cannot derive benefit from your estate. So Rabbi Akiva Iger said that that's apply solely the estate, but not the person itself. If you remember in the introduction, we explained, I just want to refresh something that we discussed because you see that subject coming up all the time. We have two entities when it's come to vows. One is called Hefza and one is called Gavra. Hefza is this bottle of Coca-Cola. I said I'm on diet, I get used to three bottles, I commit myself to drink one bottle, so the other two bottles I get used or all the other bottles have a sticker that prohibited to me because I commit myself only one bottle a day. It's applied to the item. Versus if I'm talking about me as a person, therefore it's me, my commitment to myself or to a person itself. It's not an item, it's a totally different approach. So Bekiva Iger said here, it's applied to a state, to an item, not to a person. Mudrani heimach, who asu vachaviro mutar. But if he said, uh, I am evo- avowed from you, he is prohibited from driving benefit from the other person. And the other is permitted to drive benefit from him. So, the hamidiktane heimach, and the fact that the, the, the Mishnah mentioned the word mudrani, I have um, prohibited from you, the okimna lematnitin li Shmuel, and we interpreted the Mishnah following the Shmuel, the kulan at Shiomar in all these um, cases is only when a person utter clearly, sheani toem lecha, sheani vishani ochelecha, that uh, I, I, I would taste of yours, how I eat of yours. Therefore, he is the one who prohibited and his fellow allowed. But if a person said, I am vowed from you, or he said, I am distance, I am separate from you. It goes both ways that both are prohibited to have any type of benefit from one another. So here you see, according to the the Shmuel, did not differentiate, did not uh, make a a clear distinction between you to you and from you. So Ella, so according to this way, regardless of Rabbi Yossi Bar Hanina or Shmuel, both hold that in all these different terms, Mudrani Eimach, etc. Only one way, only the one who said um, 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 Noder, the one who committed, prohibited, the other party not. Um, only the Mudar Ani Lecha, then Rabbi Yossi Bachina hold that both ways goes. And Shmuel did not even speak about it. אלא מעיקר עד ישמו אל אחי התמרתם, עד אמר שאני אוכל לך ושאני תואם לך ודאין הוא אסור אלא באכילה. המודרני ממך אפילו באכילה. Again, it's all dependent upon the specification. If he uh, used the word שאני אוכל לך, so it's only specified, look, we can uh, do a lot of things together, but as far as food, that's a different story. I have nothing to do with your food. So, you see basically that the person 
put a boundary, he limited himself specifically to food. There is a story about Rabbi Shloimele, the late Rav Kalebach, the, the great composer, right, and rabbi, and singer, may I rest in peace. One of the beauty of his life was he used to go to places, all kind, for example, California, and people hosting their homes. So uh, someone said that used to watch him, they have a huge cake. You walk in the house, people are secular, they have a big cake. So Reb Shlomo used to look, and li listen how he did it. He figured out, who knows if it's kosher, it's not kosher. He looked at the cake and says, I can't believe how beautiful the cake you made for me. It's mamish, it's great, it's, it's wonderful. You know, I wish to have more of this. Where did you get this cake from? <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal. If the guy gave him a name that he already knew that it's kosher, then he took a piss. If he doesn't, he says, I'm so thirst thirsty. Do you have some water for me? I need the water. I want to make a blessing over it. He just divert the subject. He get the water. The host did not get uh, insulted and is not eating. And that's the way he did it. But the key here, what you see, person sometimes for all kind of reason, put a limitation. He want to reinforce certain Torah laws. He doesn't want to be in violation, for example. So he said, I'm not tasting food by you. So again, here you limited only to food. So Yachei, Leiban Shmuel Achei. So Shmuel should say, Ve'im lo amar shani ochel lecha v'shani toem lecha, asur afilu ba'ana'a. If he didn't say specifically, so then even to drive um, other from of benefit from his fellow is uh, prohibited. El achit martama de amar shani ochel lecha v'shani toem lecha ude asur, because he said clearly. <coughs> I taste of yours, etc. But lo mashma de amar asu mai tama mudar ani mimchalu mishtaina baadach mashma mufreshani mimchalu lo avida imach masa umatan mashma uchakam mimchalu lo akimina barav amudi lach mashma. Again, each and every item go to the specification. For example, if you said I'm distance for you, it means. I have no matter of transaction, of business deals with you. Or if you said I'm distanced from you, it means that in your four cubits, uh, four amot, I'll not be around you. So it means each one of these terms can be a different meaning of prohibition against driving benefit from that individual. And here you enter the domain of huge quandary, what exactly the person who utter them meant. So therefore, you cannot impose those ambiguous statements as a manner of prohibition. If you remember in the introduction, we gave the story of the late uh, Rabbi Tzirzon of Kishinev. So he wrote in his response, he struggled long, and he said, how you deal with that? You go, remember that story with the head of the community and, and the butcher? So the question is, do you go by the manner of nether that the butcher commit himself and it go both ways and it means that even the president uh, ate uh, drank it's already in violation or you said no the only purpose was to make sure that people would trust and be happy with this butcher and since uh, um, the other party it's only imposed upon himself the issue of drinking because of him so you cannot say that by having the head of the community drinking for a kiddush for himself that's already imposed in both parties page 5b leima kasavar shmuel yadaim she'en nochichot lo havyan yadaim here we need to understand the concept of um, expression um, uh, imitations that um, it's not Total. It's not clear. Do you remember? We explained the past several days. You have a cup and you have a handler. The handler carries the cup, but the cup itself is the cup. Can survive with or without the handler. The handler is part of the cup. Okay. So in that sense, we use the word yad. 
part of the vow, imitation of a vow, is that considering a vow or not? You may say that if it's only part, Shmuel hold that it's not a full term of vow. So the Shmuel said, hey, yes. Shmuel mukim al matidin k'rabi Yehuda. Shmuel match the Mishnah according to view of Rabbi Yehuda. The Amar yadaim she'ein mochichot lo avyan yadaim. That he says, if you have imitation, if you have a partial declaration that are inconclusive, it's not valid, say, partial declarations. So you derive from that how important it is to have a very clear expression, a very clear intent when you express something. So here, you, I want to add a few words of the Chazonish. The Chazonish wrote about, um, it was a famous rabbi, he wrote a book called Minchat Baruch. The Chazonish said, Libo Kelevari, which is an expression of greatness. So anyway, he said, trace a situation, you have a scribe, you have a sofer, okay? He writes a Sefer Torah. And when he writes the Sefer Torah, as we, I assume you all know, he needs to um, say and think, L'Shem Kedushat Sefer Torah. That I'm writing here, it's not just a writing, it's not just the expertise in painting or in writing, it's for the intent of writing a Torah scroll. So he said, if someone think about, okay, I have the intent to write a sacred document, but he didn't express this, it's a problem. He said the person need to utter it. So he needs to say, L'shem Kedushat Sevedora, for the sake of the sanctity of writing the Torah, and then you can write. So the Mishnah Bura said, how about tzitzit, when you're making a tzitzit? So the Mishnah Bura said, it's not enough that you think, okay, I'm making now th this tzitzit for the sake of making the tzitzit. You need to say clearly. So the book called Meshiv Davar, it's a book that's written by the great rabbi of Volozhin, his name Natsiv, of Talitzvid of Berlin. So in his third responsa, he have a big question how you compare or how you juxtapose writing Sefer Torah to making tzitzit. He said, let's think about writing Sefer Torah. You said that this is sanctified um, work for the purpose of writing the Holy Scroll. Now, he said, Think about offering. When you have an offering, you need to make a declaration in the time of the temple. I am bringing this offering for the purpose of atonement for certain sins, for example, right? So he said, um, when it's come to making a tzitzit, for example, how do you know that it's, you have to say this type of declaration, you have to utter? So he said, it's all resonate the same idea that when you have something in your mind, it's nice, but it's not sufficient. Um, you see here from this language, he tried to prove, all these rabbis try to prove from our discussion here, the Shmuel hold the same as Rabbi Yudha, that if you utter miktzah if you utter partial of something, you treat it as a total vow. So the same here. You, you have to treat it in a sense that it has to resonate the, the meaning. And as we said many times, the expression is crucial. The expression, I'm making it for this purpose. Because if it's part, we enter to that discussion. Now, we bring the view of Rabbi Yudha. This is uh, Mishnah, in Tracted Gitin, page 85. And here, we're going to learn a very important concept of the uh, Bill of Divorce. In Judaism, the language of divorce, it has to be very clear, which is, <coughs> if you do not have it in a clear way, it's a problem of the validity of the get. So, for example, gufo shel get, the essence of the bill of divorce. Harei at muteret lekol adam. The person writes, you allowed to marry anyone you wish to. In Islam, you said three f times you divorce, it's over. In Judaism, it's not sufficient. Meaning, if a person just said, you are allowed to 
go and marry anyone else. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Rabbi Yehuda Omer, you have to add a clear statement. Vedin diya velichiminai sefer teruchin v'igeret shvuchin. He said that you have to write the expression, the bill of the, of release, the letter of the uh, abdonment, which means you have to say it in such a way that it's very clear that um, it's a separation. Because otherwise you can say that his intent is not to divorce her with the get, and he only express it in words, but it's not. Since it was at that time, not in our days, but in, at that time it was a matter of bill of divorce of Gitin that wasn't carry names. So therefore Tosfot Reed said you have to write clearly the word Minai. The big discussion here is over the word Minai, which means the Klosenburger Rebbe explained that when you have this matter of Gerushim, maybe the person just found the get in the street. He found the get in some place. So Minai meaning from me, I am the husband who divorce you. So the Karen Ora asks a question, how do you compare nether to a get? So the, the, it's a two different entities. The Shita Mikubetz had said, when it's come to the nether, you have to go by the expression. Um, for example, Kodashim when you sanctified something to Beit HaMikdash. The Torah used the term kol nediv lev, anyone with the heart prompt to, to give to Beit HaMikdash. That's sufficient what people have in, her, in their hearts. It's like annulling the chometz. Basically, biblically speaking, it's enough that you make this annulment in your heart. But when it's come to this type of things, people stumble this mistake. Um, um, uh, trace a situation, someone walk um, you daven in a good park heights, right? And you see a, a Meshulach, somebody from Israel, walk in and try to collect fun, right? You pull money in your pocket. You pull five dollars from your pocket, all right? The person disappear. Now you have a different poor person that comes in. What do you do with this five dollars? Can you put it in your pocket? No, it's not yours anymore because you consecrated it, right? The point is, um, um, the moment it's in your mind that these five dollars I pull out of my pocket, it's in my hand, it's going to be to this poor person, it's basically his. Alright? Anyway, so you see here, Amai Dachik Shmuel Ukma Matitin Kerab Yuda. Why Shmuel needs to go by individual few of Rab Yuda? Lukma Kerabanan, that that's the majority, and they said, Afal Gav, the Enya Dai Mochichot. המערבה מקניטינג שיטי, אמה איתני שאני אוכל לך ושאני תואם לך, ליפני שאני אוכל ושאני תואם, יש מאמינה, באין אני עדיין מוכיחות, אני אוכל לך, אני תואם לך. אז לונג, אז היא דינת סיילת אין אה ורי קליר ווי, זה אה קונקלוז'ן, אין אה ורי קליר ווי, אין אה ורי קליר ווי, אין אה ורי קוטב, 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 אין אביי אמר הוויאן ידיים, ורבא אמר לא הוויה ידיים, רבא said it's not valid partial declarations. אמר רבא, רבי אידי אסברלי, אמר קרא, now we're going to this week פרשה, how beautiful it is, huh? think about it אליאט, yeah. this week פרשת נסו, and here we talk about the uh, פרשת נסו chapter 6 verse 2, it's really ממש in this week פרשה, the Torah said a man of whom, or woman, כי יפלי לנדור נדר, להזיר נזיר להשם. It's if a person, man or woman, who shall disassociate himself by a vow, vowing a nether, as a nazir to obtain for the sake of God. So we learn that the law, that partial declaration of nazirut, are effective. So the Gemara said, makish, we juxtapose, Yedot Nazir, a partial declaration of Nazirite, lin zirut, to Nazirite itself. Ma Nazirut behafla'a, the same way as it come to Nazirut, the Nazirite is effective only if you have a very clear utterance, very clear statement, 
that you understand that this is a clear statement of Nezirut, af yedot Nezirut ba'afla'ah. The same with the partial declaration of Nezirut has to be in utterance, which means yadayim mochichot neder, that it has to be clearly. Leima beflugta, so now the Gemara challenged this disputation of Abai and Rova. Leima beflugta de Rabbi Yorida de Rabbanan kamiflegei. Which means, here you try to juxtapose the two disputations. So the Avnei Miluim and the Ran said, when it's come to get, the husband is the one who divorced his wife. So therefore, even Yadaim Sheno Mochichot, even a partial declaration, it's sufficient. But what's in come to Neder, you need to be Davka, specifically in, a, in the Yadaim Mochichot, in a very clear statement. Here is the disputation. It's none. Gufo shel get ariat mutaret lechol adam rabbi yuda omer v'din derev lechiminai sefer tiruchin v'get pitulin v'get shvukin. That's what we said earlier. Abayi da malki rabbanan v'rabba da malki rabbi yuda. Which means if you have a rabbi that follow rabbi yuda, that partial declaration yadaim shen emachichot yadaim amar lach abaye ana da amri afil rabbi yuda ad kon la kamar rabbi yuda beinan yadaim emachichot el gabei get de beinan kritut. When it's come to a bill of divorce, you need to have a full manner of cutting, of separation between the husband and wife. Because the Torah used the term in Deuteronomy 23, He write for her a book of um, um, cutting, of separation, which means veleika. You do not have a very clear in that language that he divorced her by saying, you are allowed to anyone else. So that's, um, the Rosh explained up to this point, she is his wife. So she is not total separate from him until it's a clear proof in the language of the bill of divorce. Aval be'alma, but all the other cases, misham inanle, how do you know that? Ve'ravamar. And Rava said, Ananda, I'm going to feel like Rabbanan. Yeah, I go even according to majority of the sages. At can come Rabbanan do any day mochichot. Up to this point, the Rabbi did not require a partial declaration. Ela gabei get only with the bill of divorce that you have to have the language of the get that does not clarify that is the husband um, 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 bill of divorce. It, uh, so, uh, so you see it clearly by his intent. Page six. The ain adam megareshet eshet chaverot that the person does not divorce the wife of uh, of his uh, fellow. So you see here clearly that he is um, uh, writing uh, get a bill of divorce to his wife. Aval be'alma, but uh, here here that is a very general statement. Misha matlo, so it's a, it's ambiguous um, partial declaration. So that's a valid. So how is you see from this sugya, that's the way the Tosfot read and Rashba said that the keyword is minai from me. Here is a story, true story. A woman came to a bet din in Israel, and um, she wants to um, get a, a very clear letter from the best din. It's called shtar that she's divorced and she can marry someone. She immigrated back, or she, she returned, in a way, to Israel. So here's the process, people should know. When a husband divorces his wife, he give her a get, then she needs to take the get, to bring it to the besdin, the besdin tearing the get apart, and the besdin providing her a star, a special, um, how do you call it, permissive note or document that stated that we, as the rabbinic court, approve the bill of divorce and you can go ahead and marry anyone you wish to. You know that, right? Yeah. Why are we doing that? So here is the story. The husband, who is most probably very vengeful, full of bigotry, so what did he do? He came to the bed dean and he said, She's not divorced. It's a fake. It's get mezuyaf. It's a fake. The bed in Manhattan, New York, um, um, never gave her the get. She never. She she was never divorced. She still married me. So guess what? The bed in Israel contact the bed in Manhattan and ask them if it's true or not. 
guess what happened? The bed in, um, um, he said to them, the husband said, show me a copy of the get. Show me the copy that she divorced for me. So they contact the bed in Manhattan, and the bed in Manhattan said, guess what happened? We have that, that session, we um, basically tore the, the get, but we, even we tearing it, we putting it in our file, in the whatever it is, the, the, the. and guess what? That night, we have a, a how do you call it, burglar, somebody break in the bed din. Burglar. Burglar. <coughs> and guess what? We found everything excluding that get. Which means that for sure led that the husband went that night, he or his friend, and took it, right? So the bedding in Israel, who was much in a way stronger, they basically enforce their husband. You know, usually how you enforce, you take it out separate to her, you ask a person to place the hands, etc., etc., and they basically enforce their husband to um, tell them the truth. And it turned out that they were right, that basically he did it in order to make her miserable, right? But it shows us, when it's all said and done, when it's come to a matter of get, that we have to be super extra cautious because of all the subsequences. And that's one of the reasons why the bed din basically provide a new document to her that um, in the future it will not be any bad consequences. Malachai, Malachai.